Hi, I'm Mark Clegg, welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're going to be looking at building a professional looking website using SmugMug uh, right from the beginning and things ready. Uh, what we're going to try and create in this um, session, as it were, is to kind of give us a great looking image site. We're going to put text in, we're going to put slideshow in, we're going to put videos in. We're actually beginning right from the start. So as far as the basics are concerned, um, we are going to be looking at a scroll front page, which is going to take a lot more work. Um, but initially when we get going, we're looking at the uh, real asset management of how we get all the content actually onto the site, what the different things mean. And as soon as we've got that, basically we'll be able to move forward quite quickly. Um, as far as gathering content together, that's one of the hardest things. I've taken around about, um, I would say an hour, kind of getting all the content together, which um, I've kind of split into different cat uh, categories here, uh, which is uh, going to be for boudoir styles. Uh, within here, we've got a variety of different looks and feels to the site we're going to build. I've got front page images, so kind of a portfolio that I want to kind of use all the time. I've definitely got a portfolio then to access different images on my best, my best, my best, as it were. I've got products. I've got profile and logos. I've got some site-wide graphics that we'll be using and we've also got some videos and we've got some vouchers. Now, all of those need to be uploaded onto the site, but we can pretty much drag and drop them onto or into the Smug Mug environment. I've also got um, some text that I've already written out here, um, including some lorem ipsum, uh, which is basically junk. Um, and I've got that just so I can kind of populate a page so I can get the look and the feel to the site and things as we're going through it. So if you haven't done so already, um, you're going to need to obviously register for a Smug Mug web website. The good news is there's a 14-day free trial. I'm not going via any affiliate links or whatever it is. I just did a Google search on Smug Mug prices. From there, I'm clicking onto the prices. And you can see here, um, realistically, £132 for a year, including the option for unlimited storage, is, is really great value anyway. Uh, but I'm not going to really talk about um, which kind of package to be going for, because it depends if you're a pro photographer selling and you need multiple price lists and other kind of availabilities. So I'm going to try for free uh, by clicking onto the gauge here. And then all I need to do is fill in my name. I'm going to fill in an email um, address that I'm going to use for the actual building of this site. So once we've put our uh, email address in there that it's going to be registered to, we're going to then have to put a password in that we're going to kind of log into. And then do you plan to sell photos or services? I'm going to click yes. Um, that is going to instantly uh, kind of choose a a kind of a higher level of the designs instead of the basic one anyway. So you've got to go through this um, uh, kind of little description here to begin with. Um, I sell photography services to clients. Yes, I sell photography services to businesses, real estate, media magazines. No, I don't. I sell photos to participating organizations to take in events. Well, some, sometimes I do, but really I'm selling services to clients. That's really what I want to do. But you can see here, it depends on what you want to actually achieve. You just actually pick what is most relevant to you. Once we've done this now, um, we're instantly faced with a um, choice of designs, uh, which we can go back and change at any stage. Okay, so don't overthink this at this point. Um, I would suggest that you're going to really look at what suits you and your style best, what suits the look and the feel. So are you a light and bright or are you a dark? Do you want lots of images on the front page or do you want basically a few or do you want a full screen image? That's really down to you. So uh, as I said, you can change all these um, secondary, uh, so don't kind of panic too much about it. And um, the different levels of website that you're allowed to kind of have different designs uh, will be different, depends on the package that you've actually applied for and things. But remember, we're going for a free one here. So let's just choose um, Jasper for a minute. 
and we can pre uh, preview it. This is how it's going to look. There's uh, images that they've already uploaded into the kind of the look and the feel of the site anyway. Um, and then I can go backwards to choose a different design if I prefer to go to Andy or something like that. Um, um, or I can basically just click on use this design. So at this stage, um, we're going to create our first gallery. So my homepage carousel, you could keep it as that if that's what you want to do. So uh, let's leave it as the name. We could put it as a portfolio, my homepage portfolio. You can literally uh, do as you wish here and then upload photos and, and or vid videos here. If I just click on to the plus button, we're going to go and search for the actual gallery that we want. And it's new website design. And we're going to look for the front page boudoir. And then at this stage, we'll go into either select all those images or go and choose a different set of photographs. This is really down to you again. I'm going to go and choose these images and I'm going to um, unselect the ver the only vertical image there so that basically the full screen will look really good. Open. And then you'll see that it's uploading the images really, really fast. Now, what SmugMug does as well that you really don't need to know about, it makes multiple copies in different size sizes of the same image. This then allows you to basically um, not have to resize any images. Smug Mug websites are as much about storage of a file uh, as they are um, uh, kind of just um, being visible on the, web, uh, the website. So it's a kind of a vault for all your JPEG and PNG and MP4 images and things really. I want a logo. So where am I going to get a logo from? In this point, I've already put it into my profile and lo logo here. So I'm going to select onto this one. I'm going to press open. And then display name. What is the business name? Well, I've put it as the uh, boudoir photographer. And if we've got any social media links or anything else, we can put them in at this stage. We'll do that la later on, okay? Uh, and then uh, we're going to show me my site. And then from scratch, basically in a few minutes, we've basically created a form of a website. Um, so you can't get much quicker than that uh, as far as the look and the feel. That's not what we're doing, okay? So don't worry about it. The key thing to begin with um, is, thanks very much, one of their uh, little friendly mess messages popping up. Um, we've got some navigation. Uh, we've got a link uh, at the top here, which will always bring us back to the home page. We've got um, the scrolling images that we selected and we uploaded those images right at the beginning. And then we've got some uh, other options to do. We can customize the site um, or we can actually go up into the top here and basically start in an organizational level, which I would recommend that is what you're doing. OK, so as far as this is concerned, we're going to organize. And we're going to start to actually get some help from the likes of Smug Mug telling us about galleries, telling us about what we can uh, do with them, download, change the settings and so on with it. Um, but basically what we've got here, we've got um, the site information. All right. We've got the homepage profile photographs. Those are the ones we uploaded. We've also got the logo image um, that we had in here. So that helped us right from word go. Now, the great thing about um, uploading images with SmugMug is that we can um, create a folder where we want to store things. I'd always recommend you kind of keeping things as clear as you can. So the first thing that I'd recommend, you go into create a folder and this is going to be based on um, perhaps the uh, names that you gave them here and things. OK, so we definitely need one for products. So this would be boudoir products. 
And we're going to come back to putting metadata information in and keyword in at a later stage. Um, but remember, all of this is a part of the um, basics of SEO and finding it and searching and everything else with it. Things. So we definitely want to fill more information here, even if it's going to be later on. So I'm creating the, uh, fold, uh, the folder first. And then it asks me, do I want to create what? A gallery a folder within a folder or a web page? What am I going to do? Well, let's first of all um, just make it simple for ourselves. And we're going to upload folders. And if you remember, we kind of created uh, this products here. And all I've got to do now is literally drag this folder in and SmugMug will automatically start to upload the um, folder of images within here. So if we double click in, you can see it's only, it's only got a few photographs anyway. Um, so it's not going to take very long, but I haven't resized them. Look, that's an 11 megabyte image. OK, so we're not doing anything to it. So that is the products that we've just create, uh, created. So it's stored within a folder. So it would be interesting at this stage to just talk for one minute so you can get the basics of how you navigate and find things and store things in a Smug Mug site. The first things first uh, is in the creation uh, here where we clicked on a, fol a folder. Um, I mentioned that within a folder you can store other folders and that goes quite deep. So we can have multiple folders being stored um, and it kind of kind of delve in, but depends on how far you want to go and find information or store galleries and so on with it. The more you use your Smug Mug site, you're going to get lots and lots of imagery all over the place. So good management of image con and content now is really going to pay us off. OK, the gallery is one that we're going to create um, where that's where we're going to store any images and videos. OK, images can be JPEG files, PNG files or MP4 files. That's what we can store in a gallery. We can't store a folder in a gallery. We can't store a web page in a gallery. We store those within a folder on a web page. We can then um, hold, as it were, information. We can hold a folder. We can hold a gallery. We can hold text. We can hold multiple gal uh, galleries. We can hold multiple images. But really what a page is, is a page of a book. And then on that book page is whatever you want it to look like, scribbles, text, whatever, and, and so on. I hope you understand what I'm trying to get at. But it's the folder where all the work and the management is really going to take place with. So for instance, uh, we would definitely want a series of pages eventually with our website. And if we created a folder now, this would be called pages. Yes, let's just get into the good habit of copying and pasting in straight away. Um, but realistically, we don't need to populate that folder with anything yet. All right. Um, we can just leave it there in the same way is I can go and create a gallery. And I can call it um, portfolio. 23 for 2023 we will copy it and paste that into the metadata and the description anyway. And it's at this point with a gallery, um, we've got some options here. All the options we can do in post, like I'll show you now in a minute. Um, however, the kind of the presets that are built is just in the basic way to begin with. So it's a smug mug settings. Secure security means who are you going to allow to view these images? Is it anybody? If so, it's going to be set to public. If it's anybody, but they need a password to go in, we're going to click on to a people with password. We can also select the option, which is people I choose. Now, as far as web design is concerned, 
that's really not going to be an option we want to use. Why? Um, because we're going to use that more for like a gallery that a client is going to be able to actually go and view their photographs and so on with it. So we'll, we'll get back to here in a minute. The public part though, we can also change it from anybody visible to unlisted. So in other words, they'll only get to this gallery, they'll only get to the images within the gallery uh, um, if they've got a link. It won't show up in a search, okay, because they have to have a link to get there. If we switch um, anything to a private, that could be a folder, a page, or galleries, um, basically it makes everything else invisible below. Nobody can see it. Nobody can get access to it except you when you're logged in. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to get there at all. So if in doubt, then basically you want things that are going to be unlisted rather than pri private. Private means that nobody is going to find the information. Images that you're trying to reference cannot be ref referenced um, because basically they're invisible as far as the site is concerned. Guest uploading images, um, that's really more if you're working with an assistant uh, and you want them to upload um, pictures and so on with it, they can be doing it. Um, there are a few exceptions where I used to do overseas weddings and basically guests could upload into a special gallery I created to gather all their wedding photographs. And that was just a service we offered for a wedding clients. They didn't get mixed up with my images. These were just a guest upload. So the the uh, bride and groom themselves were actually uh, uh, using it to actually view and actually select from and so on with it. And then here you've got an option, uh, whether it's going to be web searchable or smug mug searchable as well. Web obviously is Google, yes? And smug mug means from within the uh, search engine of smug mug itself as well. If we kind of pop it into um, private, um, it might look that things are going to be able to be searched, but realistically, only you're the one who's going to be able to search for them. Okay, photo protection, um, all but original. So in other words, as it's a website design, um, as far as the front look and feel is concerned, um, I will want them to be able to actually display a full-size quality file. Remember, we don't need to change the uh, quality of the images. We can upload the full resolution file here. Do I want a right-click message? Yes, I do. What that means, if somebody kind of tries to copy the image by right-clicking the mouse, it'll get a message, and that's going to basically going to click onto here. I can also, if I wish, uh, watermark images. Well, on the site, I don't really want to actually have images that are basically going to be war watermarked because I want um, my photography to look as great as it can. It's only really in client galleries we would apply a watermark to the photographs. We'll get back to that another stage. And of course, as a download button, this is only really going to be applied into galleries you want uh, uh, to allow clients to be able to download the, the quality of the photograph itself. So from here then, you've got an option. Do you want um, the images um, on your website galleries to be able to be shareable, allow comments? Well, because this is a website design, I don't want these. I'm going to switch those off for now. I definitely don't want any shopping of the website display images, different for a client's gallery, of course. Um, so we can kind of switch those off straight away. And then in the appearance, how do we want those to look? By default now, the collage land landscape is what Smug Mug uses. Once upon a time, it used to be the Smug Mug kind of thumbnails that it used to use and things really. But we'll keep in the college landscape. Um, there is an option here to have a gallery cover image, which kind of appears at the top of the gallery. Uh, we'll leave that on for now. Um, However, because I'm going to turn this into a preset and I don't want each gallery to have a, cut, a header, I am going to switch it off. Sort by date created or date taken. We've got different options here to do with file name and so on with it. Uh, we can actually do it with date uploaded and then we're going to have it in a set in. We want to switch the camera information off. I want to switch the slideshow off. I want to switch the enable map features off. Why? Because I'm going to make a preset and this is going to be site design. And uh, basically, if I use this as a preset, um, 
it's going to kind of set it as this the whole time. So I'm just going to click on create. And now I've got this portfolio 23 and I'm going to click on images here. At this stage, I can either go to my um, gallery by clicking into browse, whatever it would be, or I could actually, in this case, I'm going to click into the portfolio. Oh, we did those already, didn't we? So let's go to the front page boudoir. Okay, so let's now just select them off screen, drag them in, and those now are going to upload up into the galleries. So remember, it can be the full, full res image, so you don't need to crop it. What I would suge suggest though, because this is your website, they should be the best of your best images. And if you've only got really, you know, six really great images that you want to show off, then just show those six for now. You can always add to these galleries as we go through. So we just created a gallery of information and uh, of images, I should say. And what we didn't do, though, was really add any metadata into the actual file. So what we want to do in the settings here is remember we had the descript a description. This is a portfolio of Mark Cleghorn boudoir photography. Yes, um, you can add in as much as you want into there. The more keywords, the more description, the better it is for all S SEO. If we've made the gallery searchable through the kind of the... Um, uh, smug mug and web kind of site as well. So I want to put in boudoir, of course. I want to put in photography. What I would suggest as well, that you have metadata keywords in a, a bit of a document that you can copy and paste to actually go into here no matter what. Um, because really, you want to just save as much time as you can, especially when you're creating all these galleries. So we want to now click in to choose one of the images. And because it's the gallery that we're in, we can go ahead and actually just choose one of the photographs. And that will actually show up as the thumbnail when we step back. So if we're looking at the top here where it says organize, if we click back onto site homepage now, and we look at that gallery, that's that gallery that we just created, the portfolio 23. Now, if we want to store all images, so in other words, perhaps we're going to have lots of different portfolios and so on, we could, in fact, store them all in one holding place, okay? So in this case, we're going to create a folder and we're going to call this um, images and portfolio. It does have a, um, a spell checker as well for you, okay? So, which you just saw. Just going to put that in here again. Now, at this stage, because we don't have a um, anything within the fold folder, when we click onto the icon here to choose an image, um, basically you can go anywhere to find um, the photograph that you want to represent you in this folder as such. So in other words, I can either go into a portfolio page here and choose one of the images, and that will now show up here. But if instead I'd chosen a gallery which was unlisted, it would still show the image. If that gallery was private, it wouldn't show the uh, image to anybody who found that fold folder or galleries within it, okay? Because remember, a private gallery is invisible. It cannot be seen, so that means you cannot use the images as a part of the web design uh, as far as the look and the feel is concerned. So um, security and sharing once more. Remember, we've got an option here. Do we want to make this public? Um, no, we're going to have it as unlisted. So if anybody searches um, for the images, basically they're not going to be able to be found. If we want, though, in the public, everybody can actually see this. And this is good for our SEO as well, of course. So in this case now, we don't want to create another gallery or a folder. We actually want to just manage something we've already done.
So if we're looking down the side here, what we're now seeing is we've got um, images and portfolio. Yes, that's the one we just created, wait, uh, waiting for things. Then we have a folder that we created called pay pages. We haven't given that a photograph yet. We've got a folder which holds a gallery. Um, and hence, if we click into that, you can see there's a gallery here. It's a uh, reference to these little kind of stacked uh, images. If we go back into site homepage again, just at the top here, and then we can see that folder is visible. Then we've got a portfolio 23. Now the portfolio 23 is the one that we want to move in a minute. You can also see we've got the gallery that SmugMug created on our way in, which is that homepage. We've also got the logo images that it created for us on the way in as well. So what I want to do now is the portfolio 23, I want to move into the images and portfolio. So by doing that, what I'm going to do is drag it, not to it, but drag it to the folder on the side. And you can see it's highlighted in green here. And by highlighting it in green, it allows us to move what was a gallery outside of that folder into that fold folder. Now it exists here. So folders can contain galleries, can contain uh, pages, and can contain other folders as well. Galleries can only uh, contain uh, PNG, JPEG, or MP4 video files, okay? A web page is basically the page that we're going to, how clients are going to read things, in other words, yeah? Just like a book. I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm about now. So when we click back onto the site homepage here, um, this is how it looks. So if we go back to site at the top of the page, click onto site, we haven't changed anything at all yet because we haven't really done anything. So um, if we want to, um, first of all, get a site up and running, um, because it's we're, we're desperate for it, in other words, <laughs> yeah, we we kind of just need some something to go somewhere. Um, these front page images, even if they click on them, they're not going anywhere at all. OK, so uh, basically um, it's just a portfolio of images that is stream streaming. If we want these um, uh, navigation to do sub something, we ne need to give it to do something with. So if we clicked on search and then you type in um, boudoir, it's going to come up with the images that we've uploaded, but it will come up with fo photos by default. It'll come up with videos if you click onto vid videos, galleries, folders, and pages. Okay, so that's what the search uh, facility is. And of course, you can even have a search box on your website as standard as your uh, site grows and grows and grows if your navigation is, is a little bit extreme. We're not going to talk about that today. So if we come back into our um, navigation here, if we clicked on home, that goes straight to the front site. Yes. As a rule, you don't really need to have that home button there because pretty much everybody knows that a logo is a home button. So you can save some real estate here on the navigation bar by losing home anyway. And then you've also got this um, by default, the browse button where it's kind of clicked in as such. These things might look slightly different when you're not logged in. So if I was you, I'd always have another browser open, if possible, on a side screen where you can kind of refresh and see how a consumer will be seeing your website as well. OK, so let's click back onto the logo at the top and go back to the home page. And we're going to apply some navigation cha uh, changes now. Um, before we do that, though, let's create a simple page so we can go into Organize. And within the Pages folder at this point, we're going to create ourselves a boudoir uh, page as such, yes? So let's create a web page. It's going to give you options here for different kind of things. Um, the About Me is an easy way to start. 
the custom is fully customizable. That'll be the next one that we do. A portfolio is basically just images and pricing is a great one to actually display lots of different things with text by the side. It really does, does look good and we will look at that as well. So let's just uh, create an about me page. And then at this stage, we're going to just click on to either a horizontal, a profile, or a, ver a vertical. I'm going to click on the profile and click on next. And this is going to be about our boudoir. And once more, just for default for now, I'm going to copy and paste in here. But as I said, we would actually have descriptions. Remember, because we've already got images up online now, we can click into the icon, we can go to home, we've stored the images in the images and portfolio, or we could actually go and choose the home page uh, images. So we just click on to one and we're ready to go. Security and sharing exactly the same, public, anybody, and so on. We're going to click create. And so in this case, it, because it's got a um, option for us, it's going to go through what all things are and how we'll do that. I'm going to be showing you anyway. Um, but from here, um, what are we going to choose? So the boudoir photographer is our name, which, which is good. That's what we've put in there. But if we click onto the profile image, um, what, what do we want to do? So if we want the profile photograph, we've got to go and choose that image. So in other words, let's just switch it off for now. Do we want the cover fo photo? We'll switch it off. Do we want the social icons on? We'll, we'll kind of leave them on for now. We want an email on here to contact us, uh, preferably not for now, because we want to keep them on this page. And we want to open links in a new, a new tab. We'll keep that as yes. And icon color by default and what kind of uh, icon do we want it to be? Is it square, circle? Um, it's really down to you. So let's press done. And we're going to, it's already put some lorem ipsum in here, as you can see for us. So we don't need to copy and paste in lorem ipsum for now. This is this junk, yeah? Um, but it's a good way for us to kind of get up and go in. So we've already got our logo at the top of the page here. We've got the boudoir photographer. Um, what else do we want this to do? Well, I would say on this page, we need to at least have either a photograph or multiple photographs or the likes of a slide a slideshow. So in this case, we're going to go into photographs and we're going to add ourselves a slideshow. And we're going to just drag it. You can see the green line. So this now drops it and we're going to be asked, do I want to use a gallery? Or do I want to um, choose recent photographs, photos I choose, popular photographs, or through keywords? So the, one of the key things is that if you were in the habit of uploading uh, images to your front page, let's say, and you added a word that is unique in some way to the image metadata, and if you reference that unique word in a, uh, um, a slideshow like we are here. So let's say it was looking for elephant one. Yes, a weird one, <laughs> um, but it's looking for a keyword. And if it sees elephant one, then it would then just be looking for any images we've just uploaded, up, uploaded or that are on the site that have the keyword elephant one in it. Every time um, it sees an image with elephant one, it would associate it that you want it in this slide slideshow. So the way that SmugMug have really developed things are, are quite intelligent. They're a little bit advanced when you first start going, so don't worry about that yet. But further down the line, you'll definitely want to create yourself a smart gallery or a smart set of images or a slideshow that is going to be associated with something special as such. In this case, case, we're going to keep it simple. We'll just click on to gallery. We're going to now go and choose a gallery. And in this case, we're going to click into the images and portfolio, and we're going to click on the portfolio 23. 
We don't need to click inside it because you can see it can't. You just need to have it highlighted in green. If this had been a folder like it was here, I can double click to go inside. If the gallery isn't selected, then you just need to click it once to select it. That will give you an option to press done. That is now being associated uh, within here. So you've got some options um, to kind of apply. Uh, it's height and navigation, of course, as well. So we can choose as far as the play, uh, the playback, its speed, how it fades through images. We can even have a, a transition speed and uh, a randomization. You can change the transition speed if you so wish. You can have an image that is going to start that gallery the whole time. So no matter what, whatever is your studio style image, is the one that it's going to start off with the whole time. Then we go into the con uh, the contents. Do you want to give it an option to go full screen? Well, in this case, I don't because I just want pe people to be able to see the images. Uh, do I need the play button on? Uh, no, I don't because I want the slide to kind of start itself. And do I want the navigation arrows on the sides for somebody to kind of re-see that image? Well, well, no, I don't, because this is really showing off me as my photography. If we go back to the um, playback here, if you can see you've got the file name in the information here, you can switch that caption off by just clicking in playback the captions to the off position, okay? Um, I said to you that we also had the um, splash image that I chose. I didn't change the delay. As a rule, we usually go for a three second change on a slide. In this case, when a client comes to this page, what is the first thing I want them to do? It's start to read about us and what we're about and everything else. That's the key thing. So in this case, beyond the three seconds, I don't want to distract them with some more images at this stage. So we've done everything that we need to do. And then in the basics, we can just go in and press done. And we've created ourselves a basic page with some information with uh, a slide and basically a piece of text. Um, I would suggest though, if you are actively selling your uh, services as a, a portrait photographer, let's say, um, or if you're a wedding photographer, um, as a portrait photographer, you want them to think about booking all the time. You don't want to kind of uh, let them get away with not thinking about booking. Yes. So I would recommend on any services page, you're going to have some navigation, which is going to um, have um, a link. I should have just explained what I did. So I just clicked on to the plus here. And that opens up all the options that I've got. On the top here, you've got on just this page is ev everything to do with just this design. If it flashes red, it means that it's on the entire site. And you can see at the top here, entire site, what is the information, what is on all fold folders, what is all galleries, and just this page. It's this page that we're working on for now. We can change things with on, in this page as well, um, but let's just look at the content first. So if I just collapse this just page, I can now look at adding other things on, like we dragged that um, uh, slideshow on. We could go in and actually drag in single photographs um, or buttons or whatever it be. So let's... Um, put a navigation, but we'll choose a button. So I'm going to click into button and I'm going to drag it across. And where do I want this to be? Do I want it to the side of the text or do I want it above the text, below the text? This is your choice. So in this case, I'm going to put it by the side of the text. And when I do that now, you can see it kind of gives me some options of what I want to actually achieve on here. So I want to go to um, book now is the text that we're going to be showing on the button. Do I want to make it big? Yes, I do. So I'm going to click on large. Do I want to make it solid? Yes, I do. I've got an option though to go outline if, if I wish. 
I can use the default or I can give it an accent color within the image. And then as far as the alignment is concerned, I can center it and I can go to a page that I choose. Now, because I haven't created a, a page yet, what I'm going to just do is I'm going to click onto the browse page for now, remembering that we're going to come back and kind of fix this anyway. Okay. And then at this point we're, we're done. And by doing that, um, pretty much we've created ourselves a simple page. As far as navigation is concerned, when we go into the full customization, um, we're going to click on plus and we're going to grab a single photograph and we're going to drag it in exactly the same way. And I'm going to go and click onto the plus and then I'm going to go in search of um, some information, some graphic design, uh, what I want actually on the image so I can basically send them to that direction. Uh, for now, I'm just going to choose a uh, kind of an image pressing done, but it's not the image that I want. So we can see here the single photograph showing up now is an image and I've got an option while I have a single image to perform similar tasks that I just did with the navigation bar. So I chose the single photograph. What do I want to do on click? So I can either get them to go to the gallery where that image is from. Yes. Um, I could get them to open it in Lightbox, which means it opens on a screen by itself and when, so they can see it bigger. And when they shut it down, it comes back to this page. Or I can take them to a URL. So if I go to a custom URL, then basically it would navigate to somewhere else. For now, I'm going to open in Lightbox. Um, as far as the center image, it's on already fit image and basically original size. So we can just press done. And then we can see below here that we've also got our social um, navigation um, waiting for us. So if I click on Facebook, it will then ask me to paste in the Facebook URL. The same would be for any of our other so socials. We'll get around to that later. So what we've now created is a kind of a front page to to make this live as it were we click done and we've got an option pub publish now makes it live or we can click on save for later uh, and that basically will not make it live um, anywhere but you can come back to it adjust it or just click on publish now and then basically it, it is live or if you've gone into a page to adjust it, you've made a few errors, um, you can just click on discharge, uh, discard the changes with it, and you would be left uh, with the original page that you created without any of the changes that you made. In this case, we, we're just going to use Publish Now. We click on that, and then you can see it moves away from what was the look and feel of the um, uh, page. Uh, design where all the kind of the options were running down the side and so on with it. But we now have somewhere we can kind of navigate to, which is key. Okay. So in this case, what are we going to do? We're going to put a little bit of the navigation in here. So we press in the home button and we want to change this navigation because we just made a, a page. So we may as well do it. So let's go to customize design. And you don't have to do it from the front page because what we're actually going to affect is the entire site. And that's what it's in red again. So if we click on to here and we're going to go into links, we're going to change the home and we're going to change its name to about our boudoir. You can obviously keep these as small as you want. I've got an option to do link to where now. I want to link to a page I choose. I click on the page I choose, choose the page. You know where it's stored. It's going to be into the pages and it's about our boudoir. And we just press done. And then we've got an option 
to either close the page down and open a new, sorry, to either close the page down and go to the new page. So close the front page as we are now, and then go to that new destination. Or if by clicking onto the open new link, uh, we can click on on here. Most of the time you are going to be closing the pages down behind you. Okay. I would suggest though, from the front page navigation, you basically keep this um, uh, on. So it creates a new uh, link straight, straight away with it. It opens up a new page. So just pressing done now. So we can see it says now about our boudoir and we press done and we publish. And now this means the navigation has changed automatically. Now, if we click on about our boudoir, it now takes us to our boudoir page and it opened up that new uh, um, URL, that new web browser, I should say, uh, page straight away with it. Obviously, we haven't got a book now page. So if we clicked onto that, that would take us to wherever we set, set it to by kind of default. But you can see site wide now, the navigation bar has changed. Uh, on ev everywhere we go, this navigation bar is going to be visible and so will the cod uh, the content why because we saw it in red we saw it in red um, and that means it's across the whole site as such um, there are options um, right from the beginning of your website design if you didn't want to have everything the same once you go beyond the home page um, you would have to actually have nothing on the site that is site-wide so nothing would ever appear in red except for what is the essential navigation uh, below at the bottom or whatever it would be. You'd literally have to redesign every single page by hand. Right. So um, in this session so far, what have we done? We've created um, a, fol a folder, a gallery. We've created a page. We've adapted the page. We've uploaded images. Um, we've also changed the navigation. What else do we want to do? So the next thing would be to upload uh, more images into the folder as such. And by doing that now, we're going to just click onto the um, uh, fold the folder of the images and portfolio. And we're going to click the upload button at the top here. And then we're going to do, do we want to upload into a new gallery? into an existing gallery, or do we want to uh, upload fold folders? Um, I want to upload folders at this point. So once more, in my kind of pre um, uh, getting ready, I've created a variety of folders here. So in my boudoir styles, I want all of these to upload into the folder. As it does this, it recognizes every full folder as a new gallery. So it's going to create um, those different galleries based on the names of the folders. That's what I was saying to you. I took about an hour prior um, to kind of start uh, starting to record this to enable me to have um, pretty much everything that I need at hand to be able to kind of make the site work. A real website design for me in SmugMug, because I've been using it for so long and I have multiple sites of my own across it uh, for different reasons and different pur purposes. Uh, for, my men, uh, for my mentoring experience group, the Photographer Academy, uh, my own F4 kind of business. Um, and from within here, basically, I could pretty much create a website uh, in around about an hour. I would suggest that if you're uh, getting going with SmugMug for the first time, and if you can afford to run this side by side as we're doing it, um, you'll be able to actually create your whole website in a day, I promise you. Um, and just because obviously it'll work a little bit slower for you, but it's around about an hour for somebody experienced with SmugMug. So you can see straight away what it just did. It uploaded those um, fold the, the folders for me into that fold the folder. Here's the original one. Here's all the new ones. And we can tell that we've uploaded via a folder as such 
um, and not kind of made the galleries um, uh, unique, as it were. Because if I was to double click into the Portfolio 23, do you remember in settings when I created it, I added information in, yes? So um, I'm just going to copy some text there. Uh, if we go into the images and portfolio again, and I don't have to double click into it, okay, to actually go and click on the settings, I can just select a gallery, click on settings, and then it kind of comes up. So in this case, I can uh, change the way that people are allowed to actually see the gallery. If you're a me member, we created a preset called Site Design. By clicking now on that preset, it will adjust um, all the different kind of uh, things that we were allowing it to do um, by just kind of putting it in here. So sheet, the visual, um, not being able to download, the right click and so on and so on with it, okay? Um, but what? Well, and we'll go back and actually do that. Because it's a gallery with images in already, I can click straight away and go and choose an image. And that gallery is 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 done as such, yes? The same with the nude. We go in, we pop in some text, and this would obviously be nude session ideas. And this would be boudoir, nude, port portrait. Remember, we definitely need some keywords going on in here. Clicking onto the uh, image itself, kind of press done. And remember what we need to do here is basically click onto the preset. Now, if I don't click on the site design preset, I have to go back manually and change the settings that we were doing before, because by default, there is a smug mug default. So if I click onto the site design, and now we can see the photo protections on, uh, right click messaging is there, the social switched off, the shopping is switched off, the appearances as we set it to, and so on, and we just press save. Okay, and then we can work our way across all, all of these. Um, however, if we step backwards to the site homepage here, and we selected the folder, and we went into settings, and you could now click on all galleries within folder. By doing that, you can now go in and actually add uh, descriptions and security and everything else that we had before um, by basically kind of clicking onto the information. So later on, we're going to go in and basically add some description into all of those galleries, no matter what, and add some more keywords in, but we can do it from here. By design though, what we're usually doing is clicking into the information, going into settings, applying the site design finish first of all, pasting any text that we might have, choosing an image that represents that gallery, pressing save, and these are all things that we're kind of going on uh, to do. So again, a little bit repetitive task. I, I really like repetitive tasking, to be honest. Um, because I think it makes it very simple for somebody who's just getting going. Uh, let's just choose that image, press done. Uh, who's somebody who's getting going, you get into the rhythm of basically doing the same thing time and time again. And by doing that, I, I feel that you start to learn more about how to do things, but that's just perhaps the way that I work um, and, and so on with it. Right, so uh, let's go back to the site, yes? And we look at the site uh, design. So we've created a an about page here. We've got a link, but we haven't got a book now page yet, but we know we're gonna be doing that. We dropped in some text, but we didn't change it yet. We've created and dropped in a single photograph. We turned this into light box. Remember what it means, you click on it, and it goes to bigger. It only shows buy now down the side here for the owner. 
because I'm logged in. If you were not log logged in, it wouldn't be showing you the buy now. It just means, do you want to buy this image? Uh, and so on with it. Probably you're not going to be buying uh, your images from your own site and things. So, um, but that goes into Lightbox, into a full screen mode or whatever it is. But remember, we put that slideshow up here and that little bit of information. So the only other real thing to discuss uh, initially in the basic kind of mode here is how do we want the site to look? So um, when I went into the customized design, we have some options to choose a theme um, as far as the look and the feel to these images. So as it is, it's Smug Mug Light is its, its style that it's done. And it's basically um, got an option for Smug Mug Dark. And then it would actually just change it uh, and change the fonts and everything else within things. Okay, So it's a site-wide theme, as it were. If I didn't want to change that, uh, there's loads of op options, including color choices um, and creating our own themes as well. Um, but uh, for now, um, we're going to keep that theme. We have a choice to uh, e either have nothing inheriting from the site design, or we can actually drop a fo photo, a video in there, and a slideshow. We can do what you want, so as far as uh, a background is concerned. I would say that one of the key things for you to really look at is the layout of the website design. Now, a smug mug is intelligent, so it's going to be smart. If somebody's looking at it on a, a screen, if somebody's looking at it on an iPad, if they're looking at it on a smartphone, you know, on a television, whatever they are, they're going to actually adjust the site to suit the, for, the format, best suits that format anyway, I should say. But one of the things that you can do is instead of fixing it to a 960 layout, as you can see here in the width, yes, you can actually move it into a stretchy mode, which means this will take over as much real estate as you can. So if by design you feel that most of your visitors will be using the likes of a computer screen, then you will really want to actually use the maximum styling of the image and so on. You can see though now by doing that, um, how the um, uh, the kind of things have moved around and kind of uh, left spaces and so on. We centralized this navigation button. We had this, this one to go left. So lots of things were going against us here. If we were to just quickly drag this down and we then shrink it down, you can see how the likes of it would look on a phone. So how it collapses things, uh, makes them smaller. And you can also see the, or, uh, the order in how the, the columns collapse. So in other words, the navigation is collapsing to a below each other. You can also collapse for mobile, which then comes up with a menu for them to click on to open up. We'll show, uh, we'll show you that in the future. Um, as far as the, uh, lay the label is concerned, the name is concerned, it's not centralized. So I think this looks bad in its design now. So we definitely need to go into it and kind of change that look. The picture looks great. The Lorem Ipsum looks good. The book now looks good because we said we centralized it. If it, we left it on left, it would appear over towards here. And this, of course, is just ready for us to click on. So you always want to see what it's going to look like in the uh, kind of the the but the client mode, as it were, as well. So as I said, we want to customize the design and we want to definitely bring that title into a centralized uh, position with it. So in this case, we can either click onto the uh, navigation to change to a profile image, like remember we took it away before, um, or we can go in and basically change the container width where it has a, a control of just how much it's allowed to uh, take on. So if other words, we only allow, allowed it to have 25% of the container, it would naturally shrink the text down to suit no matter what. So if you didn't want this huge uh, name across uh, at the top of every, every page, as long as you go into the dimensions, you say, right, keep this um, to a uh, an amount container width of 25%, then you've kind of customized your image as such. Um, but most of what you're going to be doing is kind of working 
in how you want things to actually appear naturally on your site. If you didn't want this on, on the top with the social icon and everything else with it, you can just delete it. That block is gone, okay? It doesn't mean that we can't put some text in above here. We can go in and just look at text and now drop in a title. Let's drop in the title above. We click on it. We say, make this small, as far as the text is concerned. Centralize it, so center it above. Just show it's here again. We can either keep it as the default or we can actually have it as the accent color, whatever the site design is. In this case, we just looked at it, Smug Mug Light. So it has this green color, but we can change those colors. We'll go back to default and just go from there. And at this point, even though this page is called About Our Boudoir, if the page had just been called About, you could change the text that is in here without any trouble. So I can go in and do About Our Boudoir Photography. Really what we're trying to do is minimize URLs. Um, and at the top, of course, it's gonna go through the different kind of sections. So just press done, press done again. We've made those adjust adjustments. So just before we finish this session, um, let's just look at how we can uh, use SmugMug in an intelligent way if we start to move things around. If we go into the um, home page again, remember the logo at the top here, and then we come down, we click on our about our boudoir again, and we look at the uh, URL, you can see that this page is stored within something. So it says in the URL, markclagon.smugmug.com forward slash pages forward slash about our boudoir. Well, if we want to um, move the page out of that um, folder, we can. So in other words, all I've got to do now is grab that page. Do you remember what we did before with a gallery where we put it in a folder? In this case, I'm moving something out of a full a folder. Now I can't move an image onto the actual home page without moving it to a gallery. I, um, but I can move a folder and a page directly onto the um, site home page, uh, kind of in the nav uh, the navigation. So if we go back into the site home page now, you can see that um, we've now got this about our boudoir page on the right hand side here. Let's go to the site though. And if you remember what we did, we, this link would have gone to somewhere special. Now, if it had been a URL, that URL would now be broken. But because we technically moved the actual page uh, within the Smug Mug environment, and because the navigation was set to go to this page, if you move pages from one place to another, it's intelligent and it's looking for them. So you can be com uh, confident that you can kind of not screw up your website uh, um, too fast as such, really. So navigation, what navigation do we want? We definitely want an about page. We want a services page. We want some kind of portfolio page. We want a booking page. We want a, a vouchers page, perhaps. Um, so there's different kinds of navigation that most suit you. But really what we've just done is the basics to getting going with Smug Mug. And uh, from that information alone, you should be able to actually create a flow website um, within a few hours, in fact. That's all you've got to do. Um, and then we'll continue this on to get a little bit more in depth with the kind of the site build as we go.